students have been stuck at home for months now. Am I right? Now, with students slowly but surely coming back to hybrid learning and face-to-face -face learning, they need activities that focus on simply moving, moving their bodies. Am I right? Now, but wait, they need to have fun while doing it. Now, good thing I have an activity for you, and it's called Quick Dot Soccer. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Coach Lopez. So today I'm going to be explaining and demonstrating a game I created called Quick Dot Soccer. So the setup is quick and easy. All you need are poly dots of different colors, pop-up soccer goals, and if you don't have pop-up soccer goals, no problem, no issue. All you need to modify is you could stack smaller cones in a line and use those if the ball hits those cones, then that counts as a goal. Or you can use something like laundry baskets, or um, I've actually even tried uh, you know, a decent sized trash can if you have uh, those resources available. So something, something to think about. And also don't forget any type of soccer or outdoor um, playground ball works really, really well with this game. So each student starts in a different colored poly dot. Now when the music starts, you know, if you have a Bluetooth speaker, which works great and something I like to utilize in my classroom, um, or you use a whistle for a verbal cue. Now make sure that the students know every time that music starts or the walking or running begins that each student needs to take one to two step length um, away, steps away from the poly dots that they're on at that moment to make sure that when they start walking or running, in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction that they are going all going in the same direction and not against traffic now when the music stops or when the whistle is blown you could do both then the students step on the closest dot to them at that moment the music stops or the whistle is blown and they listen for what color the coach calls or the person leading this activity or the specific names that are called, depending on how large of a group that you have. So once the coach or the leader of this activity calls out a specific color or specific names, those students run to the middle where the soccer balls are. If your name is not called at all, all you do is cheer on your teammates and stand on your dot, okay? Now you're kind of like an obstacle in this game, so the students have to go around you and if the ball is kicked in your direction, obviously protect yourself, but do not purposely kick the ball away to interfere with the game in any way, uh, in any way, shape, or form. So whoever can kick a ball into the goal or modify any modified version first wins the game. Now remember, there's other ways you can also win, meaning that if you are one of the people that was called, okay, either your color or your specific name, you can still play defense. So if you can't get to a ball quick enough, or maybe someone's trying to take your ball, who knows? A lot of things can happen. Now, remember, if you can block a kick or ricochet it and it hits your leg, and guess what? If you're the last one to touch it and it goes into another goal and it goes into the goal that's closest to you, or maybe you steal it and you make a big kick, if you're the last person to touch it and it goes in a goal, you win. That's what's awesome about this game. I've seen it happen. You get the point and you win. Now, once someone scores, then the coach goes and retrieves the balls from uh, the balls that were used. So if any of the balls were scored, and of course, if the balls ended up in different places, um, it's the coach's job to go get those balls. And once that game has ended, don't forget, blow the whistle or start that music, have the students continue to walk or run, depending on your preference. And the goal of this entire activity is to keep kids moving. I hope you enjoy this and let's have some fun.
enjoyed this awesome, super duper cool, fun activity for PE. Cause I know you probably did, right? Because it's super fun and it gets kids moving. It's really quick, but also it lasts a long time and you can play this in a bunch of different ways. And if you have another way of modifying it, um, to make it work for your class, do it. So we have, we always have to make sure that we are getting everyone involved, keeping kids moving and making sure they're having fun while doing it. So don't forget, we got the question of the day. So the answer for last week, I'll say the question one more time before we move on is what has hands, but can't clap. So if you're wondering what the answer was, I did get a couple of students that actually got this right. And the youngest student was in kindergarten, which was crazy. Um, the answer is a clock. A clock has hands. Those with those hands are those little arms. We call them hands, but they can never clap. Sad. I know, right? Well, that was the answer. Hope you enjoyed that little riddle for this week. And the next question of the day, you ready for it is. How do you make the number one disappear? Say it one more time. How do you make the number one disappear? Think about it. Give me your best answers in the comment section down below. And of course, like this video. If you like and loved this awesome PE activity this week, and we're going to continue to be bringing out this awesome fun PE content in this current time that we're in where social distancing is in effect, but that doesn't mean we can't have fun still, right? Okay. So I will see you next week. I hope you have a great, fantastic week and until next time, everybody. Bye everybody. Bye.